So all the left hand side, the convective term is going to reduce to minus theta times phi times the second order derivative of phi in y. The right hand side, the viscous term, uh, assuming nu is uniform, is going to reduce to nu times the third order derivative of, of phi. Okay. And from this equation, we can deduce that the solution depends only on y and nu over theta. Right, so the phi Oh, so so we, with the with the boundary condition phi of zero is equal to zero, d phi dy at zero is equal to zero, and d phi dy at y equal to infinity equal to u e. So with with this we deduce that the solution would only depends on y nu over theta, which you get by dividing both sides by eta, right? And also on um on u e. So that's that's what we got, and then we applied the dimensionality analysis to see how we can non-dimensionalize this equation, and that is also going to give us how this solution, particular solution we get, is going to scale in terms of both the x direction and the y direction. It is going to define what are the two coordinates we are actually plotting here. So with this solution, now we are going to go back to the non-dimensionalization to see what we are actually getting here. All right. So, if you look at the units, y is in terms of a length unit. Nu over theta is in what unit? Okay, nu is always in L square over S, right? That's the dimension of a kinematic viscosity. 1 over theta is what? 1 over theta is L, right? Because it's like the derivative in x, so it's 1 over L. Okay, that's good. So UE is in what? L over S, right? So that is going to help us define what, uh, what the, the non-dimensional group we should be using to parameterize that equation. And uh, one of the questions I got on Slack is that you did uh, another equation with not just the, the parameters, but also the coordinates, the physical coordinates. I think is that King Shock? Um, oh. So this is the, the Volger one, right? The question the right, right. Yeah, um, you, yeah. OK. So, so what you need to look at in a null space, the, the null space is a space, right? So you get three columns probably in the, in the is it U or V matrix? In the V matrix, you get three columns. That three columns span the null space. So anything that can be written as a linear combination of these three columns is a member of the null space. So to justify the choice of, for example, y over l as a non-dimensional parameter, you only need to look for is the vector 1 and minus 1 corresponding to y and l can be written as a linear combination of the three columns in V you get. It does not require the vector 1 and minus 1 to be exactly one of the columns you get. I guess, I guess the question was, how do you know, how do you know which one, like, which ones to combine? How do you know which ones to combine? Look for the simple ones. In theory, you can choose anything. You can just use these three columns to parameterize your, your equation, your, your solution. That's perfectly fine. They are just uh, complicated, right? It's just as if, like, the first time we did it, we derived a Reynolds number-like thing, that is, 1 over the square root of the normal Reynolds number. That's perfectly fine. It is a linear combination of the only vector we get that defines the null space. Right? So, so the, re the normal Reynolds number is actually a minus 2 times the vector we get, which is a linear combination. And that's the conventional thing we use as Reynolds number. But when you get multiple ones, 
then it is we have a motivation to look for the simpler linear combinations that are easier to deal with. So, for example, one way to define simplicity is sparsity, right? So, if you can combine some of them to get as uh, as more as much zeros as you can, then you know my non-dimensional parameter can be written as uh, the ratio or the product of uh, very few quantities. <coughs> In this case, uh, we have the luxury of only getting one non-dimensional parameter, right? And uh, this is the eta we are going to get. So, uh, And in this case, it's pretty easy to uh, to do because y has a length scale, and uh, a new over theta has length scales cubed over s, and uh, u e has l over s. So if you divide these two, we can get rid of s. So new over theta u e is going to equal to has a has a scale of what? L square, right? And uh, now we have something l square. We have something with l. So y divided by the square root of this L square, which is uh, nu over theta ue, is going to be non-dimensional. So we can define our solution to be uh, psi to be, a, to be a function of this. So this is the non-dimensionalization of the y space, and this is this y over this is exactly what we are plotting in the in the y uh, direction. So, what does here mean? What does this forty percent mean? This forty percent means when y is equal to one times mu over theta u e, my velocity inside the boundary layer is forty percent of the free stream. Okay. So if you look at two. 0.8, so we know that my y is now twice times that value. All right. Oh, of course, we also have a scale in this direction, and uh, from the boundary condition, we know that uh, as y goes to infinity, uh, the phi should be u e. So this non-dimensionalization is basically phi divided by uh, phi divided by uh, right. So, so we are actually plotting phi prime here. Uh, so, so the the derivative of uh, phi is what we are plotting here, and the derivative of phi here, with respect to that eta, is non-dimensionalized by uh, ue. Right. Okay. Yes. So, when you apply the boundary condition here. You're applying a boundary condition on p at zero, right? Yes. What if you were to apply uh, the non-normal flow boundary condition? So uh, d e d x, I guess. Because yeah. that gives you v, right? Yeah, d phi d x equal to zero gives me v, uh, but that is already used. So so when we are deriving we are, when we are deriving an equation that gets rid of this d phi dx here, right? We already used the condition that phi at all x locations when y is equal to zero has to equal to zero. So when we are getting rid of this, the the uh, the d phi dx equal to zero at the wall is used. As a result of using that. The equation we got uh, about the equation we got has no x derivative in it, so it's not even possible to apply that boundary condition in this equation anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. So we only have a chance to apply the x velocity equal to zero, which is d phi dy equal to zero. All right. Okay. Uh, now we have this similarity solution. We know uh, eta, we know eta equal to one means means y is equal to that. 